He was defeated at Calvary. And you don't need, you have the tools, you have the resources to overcome him. And Paul said to stand. You stand for what you believe. But I find in the circles of preachers and things, people's always, they're not trying to gain strength from what the preacher said. They're there to nitpick and find fault. Now you know something? I love watermelon. But I don't like them seeds. Well, when I eat a watermelon, I spit the seeds out. Everybody's got some difference in why they believe what they believe is their opinion. But as long as people preach the gospel of Christ, salvation by grace, plus nothing, and the fundamentals, doctrinally, the coming of the Lord, the rapture of the church, King James Bible is the Word of God. I can fellowship with them. Satan wants to divide. And if he can divide people up through fault finding and things like that, then he makes that group powerless. And the body of Christ is of none effect to this world. And I want you to look here and God's purpose. Now we said last week, I talked about God leaving you here for a purpose. God has a purpose for you. He just didn't save you because you look good. Because some of you don't look good. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I don't look good. I'm, my time of looking good is long gone. He didn't save you because of what you do. He saved you for a purpose. Now look in Ephesians chapter 2. Now don't go out of here and say, I said y'all didn't look good and all that. Y'all are beautiful. You are. Everybody. Ephesians chapter 2, notice in verse 4. But God, and the thing about that is he talking about the children of disobedience and how we used to walk and our sinful state being dead toward the things of God, not caring about the Lord. Sinners. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us while we were in that state while we were unlovable, God loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Here's the purpose. That in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved. Now I want to talk to you today about that, His purpose. 
And I said in verse 7 is the purpose that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. You are going to manifest the grace of God to somebody in the future out there. He's going to show His grace and magnify His grace to somebody out there in the future. And you will be the ones that He manifests it through. Just as we manifest His grace as ambassadors, we will manifest His grace in eternity as His trophies of grace, His ambassadors. Look with me and come back with me about this manifestation. Look back in 2 Corinthians, or look, oh, yeah, back in 2 Corinthians, and notice in chapter, uh, let's see, chapter 2, I believe it is. I'm sorry, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Manifestation of Christ. How is He manifested in our lives today? I would say everyone in here would say, if I went around the room and I said, do you want Christ to be glorified or, and manifested in your life? Every one of you say, I sure do. You would. There's no one that wouldn't say that. Well, how is that to be? Well, look in what Paul says in chapter 4. In verse 10. I, let me go back and read verse 11, uh, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure. There's a treasure that we have in these earthen vessels. And he placed it in them earthen vessels that the excellency of the power. In other words, God would get the glory. You can never accomplish what Jesus Christ accomplished for you in them mortal bodies that you're in right now. Because they're called a body of death in Romans chapter 7. Paul said, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He calls it in Philippians chapter 3. He said that He's going to change our vile body. That it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body. These body of ours, this flesh, this old man that we got from Adam. And I was thinking back there when uh, Kevin was talking about in the garden. And talking about the original sin. And the thought came to my mind. And I began to think about it. Do you realize Adam is the only man that became a sinner by what he did? You're not a sinner because you do bad things. You do bad things because of what you are. You didn't become a sinner because you did something like Adam rebelled against God, you were born in that condition. You had no choice in the matter. You were born with that evil nature and that body of sin that drags you down. But God provided for you and for me, a way of salvation and provided a sacrifice that if I will receive it, I can have His righteousness put to my account and have His eternal life and there I will manifest in eternity His wonderful grace. Nothing that I did it's all about what he did. Look in, he said, and we have this treasure. Well, what is it? It's our salvation. It's the glorious gospel of Christ, of what he did for us. 
Look, he used to go come down to verse uh, <clears throat> to, uh, 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. These earthen vessels. What is being the life of Jesus? Not the man, Christ Jesus, that walked the shores of Galilee. That's not the life. The life <clears throat> that Paul is talking about. Look with me in Colossians. Hang on to Corinthians, we're coming back. In Colossians chapter 3. It's our, that life of Christ that we have in Christ. It's, he says there in verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. Look back in Corinthians again. He said in verse 11, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, in our dying flesh, in this body of death, in this vile body. God put something in there. He created something in there. And it's inside that body of mortal flesh. And that's the life that you have in Christ. And God would have you to manifest it. How in the world? Before I got saved, when I was under conviction about it, I had people to tell me, well, Brian, you know, I know you're saved because I see Jesus in you. Now, they didn't see Jesus in my mortal flesh. I mean, I love every one of you, but I've never seen Jesus in none of you. I mean, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck about it. I haven't done it. Now, if I'm around you long, like if you're around me long, you probably see something besides anything. But you know, you'll see that old man pop up. I mean, he comes alive every once in a while. About every day, I had to put him back in the hole. You know, Paul said, reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. But sometimes he resurrects himself, that old man. We call it the flesh. They don't, nobody sees Christ in you like that. Well, what's Paul talking about? How is he manifest? Well, look in, down in verse 12. He said, so then death worketh in us, but life in you, spiritual life. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. How is he manifest in our mortal bodies? Is he's manifest by words that come out of our mouth? He manifest, he's manifested by our testimony, by what we believe by our salvation and us talking about how great He is in saving somebody like me. You go out and you tell people, hey, I'm a sinner and I was a sinner. I was no good, but Christ saved me, forgave, died for all of my sins, and He took them upon His own body and paid for them, and I'm saved today by His grace. That's manifesting the Lord. That's manifesting the life 
that you have in Christ. I have eternal life in Christ. I'll never die. I'm like D.L. Moody wrote. He said, someday you're going to read in the headlines. D.L. Moody died. He said, don't believe a word of it. I haven't died. I just went to another place. I'll be very much alive when this body is put in the ground. The life of Christ. The life I have in Christ. I manifest it through what I preach, what I teach. You manifest it how you speak. Now I'm not telling people to put a sign on them and worry people to death and, and just drive them nuts. But when the door opens, when God opens a door in your family or your friends or somewhere and the door opens for you to give God the glory for what He's done for you, then you should walk through it and manifest His life that you have in Christ Jesus. Look in Philippians. You'll find in Philippians chapter 1 God's purpose for you is going to manifest His grace in eternity. But before you get to eternity, He wants you to manifest His grace in this world today. We have a message, and it's the greatest message that we can have. It's the gospel of Christ. I've never seen the Lord. Someday I will. I've never heard Him speak in an audible voice. I've never had a dream, and He talked to me. But I can open this Bible, and I can go in there and start reading this Bible. And realizing the thoughts that come into my mind, God speaking to me. You want God to talk to you? Get in the book. Romans through Philemon is wrote especially to you. That's God speaking to you in Romans through Philemon. All of the Bible is for me. All of it's for my learning, for my admonition. But it's not all to me, unto me, as a member of the body of Christ. I cannot keep all the scriptures that's wrote in this 66 book. But I learn from all 66 books. I can go back in the Old Testament and see how God dealt with people in time past. And I say, thank God that He doesn't deal with people like that today. I read in Numbers in 16, chapter of Numbers, where a man goes out on the Sabbath day and picking up sticks. And you know what happened to him? He, he goes out there to pick up sticks to build a fire. He's cold. His family's cold. You know what happens? They take him out and stone him. I read where a man goes into battle and he sees an idol of gold and a Babylonian garment and he takes that wedge of gold, that idol, and that accursed thing that Joshua said, don't you take of the accursed thing. And here he is, he sees it, he lusts is after it. He takes that uh, Babylonian garment and that wedge of gold. And folks, your flesh, you're fighting a battle, all people around you, and you look down and there's a bar of gold. What would, you, what would you want to do? Whoopee! You grab it. Haken did. And took it, hid it in his stuff. Do you know what happened to him? His choice that he made, he rebelled against God. 
They took him out there and stoned him and burned his whole family. Stoned them all. His wife, his children, they had nothing to do with it. They took everything he owned and took him out there and killed him and burned him with fire. Sometimes your decisions affects more than just you. When you manifest Jesus Christ in your life, it has an effect, a positive effect on people. You don't know the people that you're reaching for the Lord Jesus Christ by just telling people, hey, I'm saved by His grace. You don't have to just go out there, like I said, and, and, and just bug your neighbors to death. When the door opens. You know, I think Paul always looked for a door. In fact, look in, uh, well, let's go to Philippians and we'll, then we'll go to that. Look in Philippians chapter 1. Verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ may be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Look back with me in verse 14. Verse 13, so that my, here's what he's talking about, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And he said, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one Preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. They're doing it out of mockery. He said, but the other is preaching him of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding in every way, whether in pretense or in truth. Listen, Christ is what? Preached. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Do you know, Paul said in Corinthians in chapter, he said, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Listen to every one of you, I don't, male or female, when you give and you talk about the Lord saving you, your essence of preaching Christ to them and giving a testimony of His grace, manifesting the life of Christ that you have. I'm glad we can do that without fear. When doors open to us for that, walk through them. Look in Ephesians. Notice in Ephesians chapter 6. When Paul was giving out the armor of God. He says in verse 18, Ephesians 6, 18, after he goes through the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. <clears throat> and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of, Christ, of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul said, pray. As I'm an ambassador in bonds, that I have the boldness to speak. You want to pray for some, pray that God would give you the boldness 
to give your testimony to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace that you have experienced. He said in Corinthians, he said, It's not I that laboreth, but the grace of God. Paul never got over God saving him. He said, I am the least of the saints. And he said, that grace, he said, I never received it in vain. Do you know what receiving the grace of God in vain is? God saving you by His grace and you never tell it. You never bring Him no glory for it. That's in vain. Your labor's in vain. Paul said, I didn't receive it in vain. But I labored more abundantly, yet not I, but the grace of God. You know what it was? That grace motivated him. He saw himself as a sinner. He saw himself as despicable. Oh man, he saw himself as a rotten, no good. He deserved the wrath of God. And God saved him on the road to Damascus. Simply by His grace. And that grace motivated Him. And He had to tell it. And He had to preach Christ. Oh, I wish we'd get motivated by it. I wished it would burn in our hearts so that wherever we had opportunity, we'd say, Hey, I was a sinner. But now I'm in Christ. You ought to try it sometime. Give it a try. And see how it makes you feel after you do it. And see how the Spirit of God will give you strength. Try it. As that saying is, try it. You'll like it. Give it a try. Now the flesh will rebel. Before you even start, somebody opens the door and somebody says, well, I wonder about salvation. And the, and the door opens. And, and you know, and all oh, your heart will start. You think you're having a heart attack. The old flesh, no, no, no. Why? Well, he don't want to be involved in nothing like that. The new man that God put inside you, he's tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. And then you say, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Let me tell you about me. I was a sinner. And he saved me and I didn't have to do anything but believe. All I did was trust what he did for me on the cross. I'm saved. That's not hard. I find it very, I don't understand people. They can talk about everything. But, you know, you could walk down, the, you could go down to the biggest mall. I guess the Winston Haynes Mall is pretty good. And you can take a Sears and Roebuck catalog, if they still made them, J.C. Penney's, whatever. Take a phone book, whatever, and walk through that thing and not... And you can hold it like that, a good old phone book, you know, like you got. Just, or carry it either way, walk around. And the flesh won't bother you a bit. But take a King James Bible, where it says in gold letters, Holy Bible... And walk through the mall. And see how the flesh reacts. Try it. Most time you'd want to. <laughs> Are you. Now mine has got the holy almost wore off of it, and that's because it's wore out. But t turn it the other way. 
the flesh. Manifestation of His life in our life. Why would you not want to do that? After Him saving you, forgiving you of all your sins, never ever judge you for your sins again. The judgment seat of Christ is for your work. You'll be judged there as a servant of the Lord for what you did or do <clears throat> for Him on this earth. But for sin, God will never bring them up against you. Why? They're gone. They're paid for. And He did it through His grace. That's what's amazing to me. He did it, and I didn't deserve it, and He did it anyway. Why? His purpose was He's wanting to show me off someday as a trophy of His grace. We're going to manifest His grace in eternity out there. The exceeding grace of Almighty God. People, creatures, somebody is going to look at us and say, wow, that's the grace of God. One other passage. Look in first, uh, Second Timothy. And I'm going to let you go. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 1. Verse 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. That's what he testified to Paul. That's not what he testified to Peter. The testimony of our Lord was what he gave and testified to Paul. Nor me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us. And called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which is given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That appearing in verse 10 is the appearing to the Apostle Paul. You can find that in Acts 26 verse 16. The things that I have appeared unto thee and will appear unto thee. When Jesus Christ appeared unto the eleven, twelve. Well, in fact, turn back to Mark. And you don't see what the rapture's like. Turn back to Mark. And look at the difference. Look in Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom He cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with Him as they mourned and wept. Now they didn't really know about the resurrection, did they? How could they be preaching the gospel that Paul preached, the gospel that we preach, when they didn't even believe that he was going to rise from the dead? Verse 12, After that he appeared in another form unto two of them that as they walked and went into the country. 
and they went and told it unto the residue, which is the rest of the apostles, neither believed they them. But you hear religion today and you think that Peter, James, and John and the twelve is preaching the gospel that we preach through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it can't be. They didn't even believe when people told them that he had rose from the dead. They didn't believe it. How can they be preaching the death, burial, and resurrection? I mean, something's wrong. Verse 14, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Another point he asked them, said, Children, he appeared unto them and he said, Children, have you eaten meat? And he sat there and he ate with them. What am I saying? When the appearing that Peter is talking about, the second coming, they'll see Him visibly, physically, they will see the Lord. But the coming of the Lord, the appearing at the rapture of the church, you won't know nothing about it. Turn to Acts and look in Acts chapter 22. I say you, you'll know something about it, but the people won't. Why, when the second coming of Christ comes, every eye is going to behold Him. Visibly, physically. The rapture of the church. Look at this place. Look in uh, Matthew, uh, Acts 22, verse 9. Well, let's read verse 8. He, he's on the road to Damascus. Uh, it's hard to cut in there. Verse 6. And it came to pass as... Uh, that as, as I made my journey and was come nigh to Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone a, uh, from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Now watch it. And they that were with me saw indeed a light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spoke to me. Now, another place they heard the sound of a voice. One place in the Bible they heard the God speak and they thought it was thunder. You know what it's going to be when the Lord comes for the church? It's going to be like a flash of light and we're going to be gone and this world's going to think, boy, there's a big old crack of thunder there, wasn't it? And that was God bringing it up. While the Bible talks about the, God's voice being a, a thunder, when you hear it thundering, I always think of them verses. He's speaking pretty loud today. Thunder. I don't go out here and think I'm crazy. That's what the Bible talks about. One of these days, he's going to thunder. And just like a flash, we're out of here. There ain't going to be no visible physical things that nobody can see when the rapture takes place, we're gone. I don't even think this world's going to realize anything happened. That I got my own opinions about that and I just, you know, that's where pre preachers get in trouble giving out, preaching their opinions for doctrines. And I wouldn't do that. I got my own opinions just like everybody else has. But I think the coming of the Lord is going to be a mystery. It's a part of the mystery and I believe after it's done it's still a mystery. I don't think this world's going to know anything about when he calls the church home. I think it'll go on. 
And you bet your every dollar you got. If you bet. You know what they'll preach during the tribulation period? I will guarantee you they'll be preaching you got to rightly divide and follow Paul. They're going to be preaching you got to get saved by grace through faith and all of this and preach the gospel that Paul preached instead of the gospel of the kingdom. I'm talking about the religious system of the world. Well, anyway. Well, I got through pretty good, didn't I? Done good. Willie didn't have to holler at me. He said he was going to holler at me. I got too carried away.